This is Akash Vani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on 17th Indian Cooperative Congress. The participants are Dr. Sudhir Mahajan, Chief Executive of National Cooperative Union of India, and Om Vesh Upadhyay, anchor. Our rural economy needs faster and more sustainable ways that can lead it to development to cater to the needs of its population. The cooperative societies play a constructive role in this area. They enable individuals and businesses to become financially independent. India's apex body of cooperatives, NCUI, has been organizing Indian Cooperative Congress since its inception at timely intervals. So today to discuss on the role of cooperatives and the 17th Indian Cooperative Congress, we are joined by Dr. Sudhir Mahajan, CEO of National Cooperative Union of India. Welcome to the program, Dr. Mahajan. Thank you so much. So, sir, to begin the discussion, could you please share with our listeners what will be the highlights of the 17th Indian Cooperative Congress and what key discussions will be held in the Congress? See, this 17th Indian Cooperative Congress is going to be held on 1st and 2nd of July. Incidentally, this date is also coinciding with the International Day of Cooperatives. So, and Honorable Prime Minister has consented to be the chief guest. He is going to inaugurate this. And the valedictory function is going to be, Honorable uh, Speaker is going to be the chief guest for the valedictory function. See, this is a knowledge sharing platform. And uh, the purpose is that how the strategy has to be devised because of which cooperative movement in the country can build, grow in a proper manner. So, best practices of the existing cooperatives and the challenges which are being faced by the various sectors, they are discussed. So, along with the inaugural and the valedictory, in between we have the technical sessions. So, this year technical sessions are more relevant because we know that civil society also plays a very important role. Cooperative, the corporate sector plays a very important role and the industry, how collaboratively they can create a ecosystem because of which cooperative sector gets a boost and how they can build up in a better manner. We have uh, conducive cooperative legislation and policy reforms. On this also, there are going to be discussion. And then ease of doing business for competitive cooperative business enterprises. How technology is playing a role. Because what we observe, that there is a general reluctance among the cooperative sector to accept technology. That is the reason we find only few icons in the cooperative world. Not many cooperatives, they come up that level. Or in case we want them to grow to the level of the private sector, there's always a gap. So gap, we understood that gap was because of the adoption of the technology. So these are few technical sessions which are going to be held and all the experts from the industry, from the corporate world, from the cooperative world, they'll all be coming and they'll be sharing their views. And then we are going to form a strategy document. What should be a roadmap? How challenges are going to be addressed? Dr. Mahajan, you talked about collaboration. That is a very important part in the overall expansion of cooperatives. So how does the union or cooperatives are planning to gain cross-sectoral collaboration with local government, public and also with private sectors? What's the plan forward? As you or our listeners must be knowing that in July 2021, Ministry of Cooperation was established. And first, I would say NARA or the tagline which was given by Honorable Prime Minister and Honorable Minister of Cooperation was prosperity through cooperatives. So under this, the main, you know, we took that as a tagline and we set up a cooperative entrepreneurship development cell in NCY. So first thing which we did was, because this was a period which was, was still grappling with the COVID and the post-COVID effect was visible in private enterprises and the cooperative enterprises also. So then we gave an opportunity to the lesser known and the women-led cooperative for a proper market. We set up an NCY heart in our own campus where these people, they could bring their produce different kind of products which they were making because they were making amazing products, but they were not having a market. So we provided market to these people. So in the process, in this journey, what we learned that these products are good, but they are not getting a remunerative prices. So what were they lacking was design intervention, packaging, branding. So we had a tie-up with National Institute of Fashion Technology. So then this became, because from all over the country, cooperative people, they were coming and they were bringing their products and they were selling it from the platform which we have provided to them. It became a workshop kind of system. It became a laboratory. They were trying to understand each other's strength and they were trying to create new new business models because of this. So then, understanding all these things, we wanted that more such resource organization, they could pitch in. So we had a tie-up with German Development Corporation. They are having a footprint in the country for the past 60 years. And they are very strong in the skill areas, in the 
institutional strengthening in the technical knowledge they have so these all this is a collaboration which we did then we came across rutag this is a rural technology collection group the rutag is iit delhi is a brain child and likewise we have the centers all over the country in seven iit this was second collaboration which we did art of living is doing a phenomenal job because is the universe which they share is by and large the same that universe in which we work scaling is also one of them then water source management there are plenty of areas on which the people they work and they also provide a very good market to that uh, shri kendra so we had a mou with uh, art of living people also thereafter we had mou with pixra global pixra global is a washington based foundation and they wanted to provide platform global platform to all the artisans who are associated with us and they are making a product then there's another organization of government of india which we call it as export promotion council for handicrafts since four times a year these people they hold exhibition and buyers come from all over the world so these people they got a chance to showcase their product in the fair no which those people organize and they start getting orders also from there this is international year of millet so we had a agreement with indian institute of millet research hyderabad because farmers they were facing challenge that how they have to process millet what is the shelf life how they can retain it and how they can make good products out of that so these people they are guiding them and now since they are having a mapping all over the country where millets are grown so small small centers we are planning that it should be set up there itself so that you no know, these people they should also be in a position to cultivation you know, they can also cultivate more millets and uh, the processing and the end product they could also be generated from there then everybody knows that there is a mission which is called as a national urban livelihood mission under this mission they make self help groups and the mission is that self help groups they need to sustain themselves so district magistrate of the area where i have in my office so i called him over i said because the people with whom we are working they are basically the vulnerable section of the society so we could mobilize 3000 ladies in and around houskas area different bursaries which we have why did we do it because when we got into mou with national street vendor association of india their demand was that their men folks are vending throughout the day but the ladies who are back home they don't do anything in case they can also be provide some platform so we set up a incubation center in our premises and through sgs first of all we motivated them to make sgs and we started giving skill training in different skills there are nine skills in which we give training to these ladies so seeing the response dm of the area he also came here he saw that these ladies are getting beautiful training and this is a holistic training which we give from wellness yoga group dynamics how they need to you know market themselves speaking english basically it was a confidence building exercise or confidence building training along with the skill training which we impart to these ladies so we joined hands with the district magistrate to so national urban livelihood mission because their job was to kill self help groups and to make them sustainable since we were sharing the same ecosystem now our ladies who got training they became their resource person all those sgs which were associated with different districts because he is also state head of this uh, mission so they were more than happy in collaborating in this session also with us and dr mahajan can you please tell us about the e-commerce platform that prime minister modi will launch on the 1st of july all these cooperatives they are having a major challenge only of the marketing so we wanted to set up a e-commerce platform and now on this 1st of july honorable prime minister is going to launch e-commerce platform exclusively for the cooperatives which is going to be first of its own kind in the whole world so far no such platform exists only for the cooperative product and the company which is doing it this is a startup which is being incubated by google so we are leveraging the strength of the google in this they are doing marketing for us they are doing publicity for us and this is going to be along with the commerce is going to be social element platform also because all these cooperative societies they will be whoever will be on boarding with us first of all they will not be any charge in case they want to on board they want to put up the product here secondly will be curating their products by giving hand holding by giving training package it how they need to you know brand it high definition photography is to be done so this is all going to be done free of cost for these cooperatives so that they should be having a visibility at the global level Absolutely. so these are two things on which we started you uh, very beautifully explained that how cooperatives are prioritizing the participation of women and weaker sections to promote gender equality and representation of all in the same line i want to understand from you in very short uh, dr mahajan that what are the measures that are abided by the cooperatives in order to strengthen the training education and research in the present day context 
see, I forgot one very important point which I want to mention there also. You must have heard about HCL Foundation, right? HCL is a known name in the world and they, these people, they have set up a foundation. Through CSR, these people, they undertake various kind of activities. You'd be surprised to know more than 250 crore of rupees these people, they spent on CSR. So we had a MOU with HCL Foundation also. And why? The purpose was because they also do the same kind of thing. They are also helping needy ladies. They are also into formation of self-help groups and all. But to everyone, I have been telling that, see, self-help group is an informal set of gathering of uh, ladies who come together and they get into some kind of enterprise. But ultimately, they need to get into the mold of cooperative. Because the moment they get into the cooperative mold, so their visibility is from village level to the international level. That is an advantage which cooperatives have. Because HCL Foundation is also touching lives of billions of people. So we join hands. And in Noida, we are going to set up a big center. We already had a building ready in 3,000 square meter of an area. Where Art of Living is giving us Schneider, Jaguar, Godrej, Nascom, such kind of big companies. Everything is going to be free of cost. They will set up a center there. And similarly, HCL Foundation is also setting up a center there. Then you must have heard about Hitachi. Hitachi is into e-vehicles and all that. They are also going to set up a center there. And there's an ethics group which is into logistics. There's the biggest logistics company in the country. And all John Oshri centers, the supply chain and the warehousing arrangement is being done by this company. So we will be leveraging their strength, HCL Foundation and for logistic purpose, ethics group, in making our e-commerce portal more robust. So whole thing has to flow from there. So that is the reason means I can very well see that this portal is going to be so effective, it can easily compete with one of the important private portals which are available in the country as on date. Absolutely. Now, when you told about, when you asked about this, the training and all that, right? Yes. So, our core area is imparting training and education, right? So, what we learned that training and education, again, there are various centers all over the country where training education is being imparted. But we were not doing that well on the training front, on the education front, because, again, we had a limited scope of reaching out to the people. So, we are setting up one learning management system portal. So, learning management system portal is that online education can be imparted to existing cooperatives as well as to the prospective cooperatives. So, that is also this is going to be a path-breaking initiative which we will take. And this portal is also going to be inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister on 1st of July. And as we enter the concluding stage of our program, I would like to take your views on, apart from traditional business, are there also any plans to expand and promote cooperatives in new emerging fields like renewable energy, organic farming and seed production, Dr. Mahajan? Yeah, sure. Because new ministry which has formed, they have set up three multi-state cooperative societies. One is into seed, one is into organic farming, and third is into export. That is the initiative which ministry has taken. But besides this, as I said, that cooperative entrepreneurship development cell, which has been set up by us, so there we are toying with an idea in collaboration with IIT, how to set up technology cooperatives, how to set up renewable cooperatives, because we also have a program which is called as a Co-op Connect. Through Co-op Connect, we are in touch with 20,000 youth. And you must have heard about another program, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. So again, the national coordinator is one of the professors of IIT only. So under their umbrella, there are 3,500 colleges and they have adopted 18,000 villages. So their purpose is also that how to you know, change lives of those people by giving various kind of technological interventions. So, technology cooperative, consulting cooperative, why there should be only Ernst & Young, Pricewaterhouse in the hands of the private people? Why can't be cooperative, which is a consulting cooperative, we should give consultation to many other cooperatives as well as in the private sector. So, these are all the ideas which we are toying with, definitely in very short span of time, you would see many such cooperatives on these areas also, they will also be established. And on that positive note, we conclude the program. Thank you so much, Dr. Mahajan, for joining us today on Akashwani. Pleasure. Thank you so much. You were listening to a discussion on 17th Indian Cooperative Congress. The participants were Dr. Sudhir Mahajan, Chief Executive of National Cooperation Union of India, and Omvesh Upadhyay, Anchor. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsatalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 92890940.